David Harding, Counter Spy, presented by the makers of Old Nick and Bitter Honey Candy Bar. And today, for the last time on this program, we present our special money-saving offer of a stainless steel slicing knife for you folks who enjoy delicious Old Nick and Bitter Honey candy bars. We offer a 13-inch stainless steel slicing knife guaranteed to equal knives selling at 75 cents to $1. Sent to you for only 25 cents with two wrappers from either Old Nick or Bitter Honey candy bars. Here's where to send your order. Send to Old Nick... Box 144, New York 8, New York. We'll repeat the address later, so have pencil and paper ready. Get the address correct, because this is the last time this offer will be made on the David Harding Counter Spy program. Washington calling David Harding Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Harding, counter spy, calling Washington. David Harding, chief United States counter spies, especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad and to secure for every American the rights which are his under our Constitution. Aunt Mary? Aunt Mary, you haven't gone yet, have you? Aunt Mary, where are you? In here, child. What's the matter? Oh, thank heavens. Oh, gee, I was afraid you'd leave before I got home, and I've got something for Uncle Bill. Oh? Wait, I'll show you. There. A picture of you. Of course, it's kind of glamorous, but still it looks more like me than any of those old ones you sent him. Mm, it's really lovely. Now at least Uncle Bill will recognize me when he sees me for the first time. I'm sure he would anyway. Aunt Mary, do you think he'll look the same? The same as what, Anne? You've never seen him. Well, I mean, will he look the same to you? Yes, I think he will. Two years can change a person a lot. Look at me. I wonder. You wonder what, Aunt Mary? Oh, nothing, Anne. Now, I expect to be gone until Friday, but if the boat should be late getting in, I'll send you a wire. Oh, don't worry, Aunt Mary. It's only four days. I can take care of myself. I'm a big girl now. Yes, of course you are. A young lady. Well, I'd better be going or there'd be no one there to meet your Uncle Bill. And I don't think he'd like that. General alarm for Rick Malone, escaped federal prisoner serving a 55-year term for bank robbery. He may be armed, is considered dangerous. He is 5 feet 10 inches tall, blonde hair and blind in right eye, left eye blue, bridge of nose broken, three-inch knife scar along left side of face. All information about this man is to be transmitted to counter spy headquarters. We are coordinating the nationwide search for escaped federal prisoner Rick Malone. Counter spy headquarters, Peter speaking. Oh, good work, Foley. Give them the usual distribution. Send about 20 copies over here. The wanted circulars printed already? Right, Mr. Harding. They ran off an extra 5,000 copies. Good. Any results on the woman who visited Malone? Not so far, Chief. We've got four agents trying to pick up her back trail. What about the letters he smuggled out through that guard he bribed? Well, that's a funny thing. As far as the guard can remember, they all went to South Africa. What? Cape Town, South Africa. Hmm. I've wired Johnson, our agent in the consulate, there to check on it. Nothing back yet. South Africa, hmm? You alert our seaport officers? Yes, just in oh. case. But I don't think Malone will try to leave the country, Chief. His face is too easily identified. And bad eye, the scar, hmm. they should make it a lot easier for us to pick him up. Well, not too easy, I hope. What do you mean? We recovered practically none of the $250,000 he was convicted of stealing. I'd like him to find that for us before we find him. That water tower we just passed, Mary, means that we should be getting close to Caldwell, huh? Another couple of minutes, Bill. Then we should be coming to that ledge you described. 
Mm-hmm. Uh. Just past that curve up ahead on the left side of the road. Oh. You're going through with the whole scheme, Bill. Of course I am. How long do you think I'll be free if this face of mine stays the way it is? Why do you think I had you set up house here with that kid of my brother's? Suppose something goes wrong. Suppose Dr. Franklin can't do anything for you. I've read all about him. He can. What if he suspects something? If you played your part all right for the last two years, he won't. As far as he's concerned, I'll be just Bill Gordon. Turning home to his beloved wife, Mary. <laughs> that cute little niece, Anne. They'll have descriptions of you all over the country by now. He may recognize you. Slow down, Bill. There's the ledge. Slow down nothing. Hang on. Bill, we'll go over the edge. <sighs> Bill. Did that purposely, Mary, so the cops would see the skid marks. Perfect, Mary. I can work myself down to that ledge. And you know what to do with the car. Don't forget to leave it in high gear before you jump. I spent three years in the pen for that dough I stashed away. I'm not going to lose out on it for three hours of pain. When I get through working over my face with my knife, even you won't recognize me. Please, Aunt Mary, don't cry. I should never have let this happen. Oh, you can't help accidents. Uncle Bill will be all right. Why are they so long? Why don't they tell us something? Mrs. Gordon, oh. I have good news for you. He'll be all right, Dr. Franklin? Yes, it'll take a little time, but when we're finished, he'll be better than you. Oh. Well, when will he be able to come home, Dr. Franklin? Well, he can go home in a few days if you get a nurse to take care of him. That soon? Oh, I'll take care of him. Well, I'm sure you would, but we'll need a little bit more expert care than that. And now, uh, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to talk to your aunt for a minute. Oh, of course, Doctor. Dr. Franklin, is there anything Oh, no, that... no, no, I, uh... Just want to clear up this point of sending him home. You see, he'll still be under my care for several months to come. His case requires extensive plastic surgery. There'll be operations? Yes, quite a few. And he'll have to heal completely between each one. He can do that just as well at home. Oh, we'll see that he's well taken care of. Uh, one thing more. About his eye. Yes? I doubt if there's any sight left, but uh, I'll have an eye specialist look at it. Then we'll see what we can do. Thank you, Doctor. And this is going to be a most interesting case. Oh, uh, by the way, about a nurse. Uh, will it be all right if I send out a young woman who's worked with me in a number of cases? Whatever you say, Doctor. Uh, her name's Jane Wilton. I think her salary is either 10 or $12 a day. I'll send her around as soon as I send Mr. Gordon home. Here they are, Chief. The coordinated reports on the Malone escape. You've gone through them? Yes, I can give you a fast briefing on it. Yes, go on. It'll save time. Well, first, there's the general alarm and description that was broadcast. Yes. We got four reports that fit a definite pattern. Huh? All from diners and roadside stands. Mm -hmm. Two on Highway 28 and two on Highway 55. And the sequence indicates that if it was Malone, he's heading west and north in the general direction of Ohio and Illinois. Yes. Well, now, what about those letters to Cape Town, South Africa, that Malone smuggled out? I just got a cable from Johnson in the consulate there. I'll read it to you. Good. He says, check on address here. It is commercial mail drop. For a fee, they mail letters from South Africa to any part of the world. Hmm. Their record's incomplete. Wiring list of 14 American addresses they forward mail to. Cable, if additional information is desired, Johnson. And the addresses come in? Yes, here they are. Mm -hmm. You'll have them all investigated. It's already being done on all but two of the addresses, Chief. Right. I thought we might look into those ourselves. Oh? Which ones? Caldwell, Ohio, and Evanston, Illinois. They're both directly in line with the route Malone may be taking if those reports are true. Well, it's a sin she won't come to Washington, so we may as well get out into the field. Arrange transportation to Caldwell. We'll direct operations from there until further notice. We'll continue our David Harding counter-spy case for Old Nick in a moment. Today, for the last time on this program, we repeat our special money-saving offer of a stainless steel slicing knife. Thousands and thousands have sent in for this knife. Many people have sent in a second time. I know you won't want to miss it. So remember, this is our last offer. You'll want to pay special attention and act right away. 
we offer you a helpful, handy slicing knife nearly 13 inches long with a blade of gleaming lifetime stainless steel. And notice this especially. The blade is hollow ground. Hollow grinding is a process which is usually found only in knives costing $2 or more. Yet, you can get this knife for only 25 cents with two wrappers from delicious Old Nick or Bitter Honey candy bars. Yes, to get your stainless steel slicing knife, just send 25 cents in coin with two Old Nick or Bitter Honey wrappers to Old Nick, Box 144, New York 8, New York. Old Nick, Box 144, New York 8, New York. We can make this offer only through special arrangement with a famous cutlery manufacturer who has a new secret process by which stainless steel can be successfully hollow ground. We guarantee that this stainless steel slicing knife would compare favorably with knives costing 75 cents to $1, even without the special process hollow grinding. But hollow grinding gives this knife longer life, a keener edge, and greater usefulness. So when you send in, you're really getting an outstanding bargain buy. Now remember the address. Old Nick, Box 144, New York 8, New York. For each stainless steel slicing knife you want, send us two wrappers from either Old Nick or Bitter Honey candy bars and 25 cents in coin. This is the last time this offer will be made, so act immediately. Be sure you get your stainless steel slicing knife. Send your order today. Now, back to our Old Nick David Harding counter spy case. <laughs> Wilton. Yes, Anne. My uncle wants you. I'll be right with him. You keep him company till I come. I don't think he likes my company. Now, Anne, you've got to understand. It's not comfortable being wrapped up in bandages the way your Uncle Bill is. You have to make allowances if you want to be a nurse. I'm not sure that I do anymore. Just because your uncle's a little bit irritable. Oh, I'd rather be an airline hostess. Travel, go everywhere like Uncle did. Then I'll get you anyway. Most airline hostesses are registered nurses. Miss Wilton, Mr. Gordon asked for you. Oh, I was just going into him. Now, Anne, keep an eye on that bra. What was that all about, Anne? Oh, I was just talking to Miss Wilton. About being a nurse? Yes. I think it's a wonderful idea. It'd be nice to do something useful in this world. I suppose so. When your uncle's better, we'll see. Maybe there'll be enough money to send you to college so you can take up nursing. Oh, but you don't have to go to college. Being a high school graduate's enough. Oh? Anyway, I... I don't think Uncle Bill would care enough to send me to college. Well, what do you mean, Anne, darling? Oh, nothing. Mrs. Gordon. Mr. Gordon would like to see you. Right away. Anne, you stay here. I want to talk to you afterwards. How is he? Splendid. He's coming along fine. Just a little bit impatient. Oh, that's good. I'll get his broth. Close the door, Mary. All right. Mm, what's the matter, Bill? I'm just going nuts sitting around here. Well, this is your idea. It's a dead and quiet. <laughs> Worse than the pen. I mean, there at least they keep you from leaving. Here, you got to be your own guard. And you're not a very good one, Bill. What do you mean? Anne, you ought to treat her more like an uncle should. Well, I can't stand the bread. I never did like kids. You told me to get her when your brother died. Yeah, sure. So you could set up a respectable front in this burg. And I'm not sorry I did. No one's going to connect a nice Mr. and Mrs. Gordon and their lovely niece with Rick Malone. I thought we were forgetting Rick, burying him. Of course we are. What do you think I'm putting up with all this for? But the burial is only skin deep. Is that it? What? Nothing. I saw Dr. Franklin. Yeah? What did he say about the eye? He's going to start on it next week. Well, can he match the color of my good one? He says he can. Oh. Something about restoring the color by tattooing No, the... no, don't tell me, don't tell me. <laughs> that part I know. Read about it every day for three years. How we could make a bad eye look just like a good one by tattooing in the color. Is that why you picked this town? Because Dr. Franklin practiced here? Sure, of course. You know, after he does that, maybe we can pull out. And that's the big thing the cops will spot on me, my eye. With that fixed, we can blow this bag. Start enjoying that dough. Enjoying it. You bet. <laughs> yeah, I'll make up for these two years that you were buried in this hick town. All right, Bill. Only you'll be aching up 
for the wrong years. on the right track, Mr. Harding. Those letters from South Africa went to a Mrs. Mary Gordon and her niece, Anne. They supposedly came from her husband, Bill, who's been abroad for two years. Two? Yeah, I checked. Hmm. Malone was in the pen for three, but Mr. Gordon just came back a few days ago. Did you see him? Sure. Well, what's it? Chief, for all I know, he could be a dark horse candidate. His whole head is wrapped in bandages. Nobody in this town has seen him. He was in an automobile accident just before he arrived. Yeah, that'd be a nice cover-up for plastic surgery. I checked at the local office of the highway patrol. There were skid marks on the hill road. Mm, how about the car? Pretty thoroughly banged up, but still in high gear. Then I talked with the ambulance boys who had to remove Gordon from the ledge. They said his face looked like it had been through a meat grinder. Uh, who's the doctor? Uh, Dr. Carl Franklin. Franklin? Mm. Oh, isn't he the plastic surgeon, the one who specializes in the new method of hiding scars by tattooing? Might be, Chief. I don't know anything about that. Uh, what about Mary Gordon? There's no good description of the woman who was with Malone, so I've wired the prison to send along a guard who could identify her. Oh, good. And check with the state and immigration authorities on the Gordon passport. Right. You know, I'd... I'd like to get a look at Mr. Gordon. Well, we can hardly go in and rip off his bandages just on suspicion. I could speak to the doctor. No, no, no. I'd rather not tip our hand. Is Gordon at the hospital? No, he's home. There's a registered nurse taking care of him. Nurse, huh? Yeah, but asking her would be the same as asking the doctor. No, well, perhaps not, if we didn't ask her directly. What do you mean? Do you know if she was in the Army during the war? Well, I think so. I could find out. Yes, do that. Find out what outfit she was with, who she knew in it, and everything you can about her Army career. What for? Because you're going to pose as an ex-member of her outfit. Take her out, talk about old times. We may be able to parlay your conversation into a positive identification of Malone. <laughs> This has been a wonderful dinner, Mr. Peters. I'm glad you called me before you left town. I don't know when I've enjoyed myself so much. Well, reminiscences are always fun, Miss Wilton. Well, it's good to know that everyone in the 97th evacuation hospital is making out so well. Well, you seem to be doing all right. That's an understatement. (laughs) There are more nurses now than ever before in the country. And still there aren't half enough to take care of all the work there is. Don't tell me you have to go back on duty again tonight. Oh, no. The patient I'm taking care of is a lovely niece. She pinch hits for me nights. Oh? I'll make a nurse out of her yet. (laughs) Not afraid of competition? Competition? Heavens, no. The more, the better. It just makes it easier all around. Oh, but I'm not keeping you from anything, am I? Well, I have to be leaving soon. Oh, by the way, I knew there was something I forgot. I've got some pictures here of the old 97. I took them after you left the outfit, but you know some of the people, and I thought you might like to see them. I'd love to. Now, let's see now. Here's one of Kriege. Mm-hmm. He's gotten a little fatter since he's out of uniform. Oh, he's not the only one. <laughs> oh, that's Doris. Still as blonde as ever. Yeah. Uh, and, oh, for heaven's sake, this picture. Huh? Oh, that one. He's just a friend of mine. He wasn't oh, with I the outfit. Oh, I know. Out- he's my patient. What? <laughs> for all the coincidences. You mean you know Bill Gordon? Why, certainly. He's the case I'm on now. Oh, of course, since the accident, he's changed, but I have recognized the picture easily. Well, what do you know? Your having his picture is somewhat reassuring. His attitude's a little, well, gruff. Hmm? But I guessed it was just the accident. <laughs> I'll have to tell him about this. Tonight? Oh, it can keep until morning. I'm off duty now. Well, maybe I'll stick around and see him myself. You know him well? Not as well as I'd like to. I'd better arrange for hotel accommodations if I'm going to stay over. If you wait, I'll see you home. Don't bother. I don't live far from here. All right. And thanks for a very interesting evening. Come in. Oh, Mrs. Gordon, is he awake? Yeah, of course I am. What do you want? Oh, I'm sorry to disturb you. I didn't see you standing at the window. I forgot a book I was reading and came back for it. Forget it. Thank you. Oh, I thought you'd be interested in knowing there's a friend of yours in town. What? A friend? Yes, I had dinner with him. We had mutual friends. He had your picture in his wallet. My picture? What was his name? Mr. Peters. He said he'd probably call tomorrow. Uh, Mary? 
Shut Where that kid I? up, Mary. Well, please, Miss Wilton, stay with Anne for a few minutes. I want to talk to my husband. Certainly, Mrs. Gordon. You know what this means, Mary? Yes. Coppers, they traced me. I don't know how, but they didn't. They always will. We've got to get out of here. What's the use, Bill? I'll tell you what's the use. Three years of stir. I ripped my own face. I figure everything so I can enjoy that 250 grand. I'm going to do it if I have to kill half the cops in the country. I was hoping you might forget that money. What? That you might like this kind of living with the kid and everything. Well, you're nuts. Hey, you're talking like some gingham and roses house for all. Why not? I've been living like one for the past two years. Bill, why don't Shut you up. get... Shut up. A car just stopped outside. Bill, if you gave back the money, maybe they... Two guys. They're law. You can smell them from here. You can't talk. Talk, talk, talk. I would have gone except for your talk. Miss Wilton, Anne. What are you going to do, Bill? You'll see. You'll see two of these coppers start coming up that walk. We'll return to our old Nick, David Harding, counter spy case in a moment. You know, friends, this is the last time that David Harding counter spy listeners will hear our outstanding offer of stainless steel slicing knives. So if the lady of the house isn't listening now, be sure you tell her about this offer. Or better still, send in for one for her. Remember, this is an extra useful slicing knife guaranteed to compare with knives costing 75 cents to $1. Because of a new secret process, we've been able to have this knife hollow ground a feature usually found only in knives costing $2 or more. But we offer this slicing knife to you for only a quarter with two wrappers from Old Nick or Bitter Honey candy bars. Our slicing knife has a blade that is gleaming stainless steel, hollow ground with a razor-sharp edge, hollow ground by a special exclusive process to keep its sharpness for a long, long time. The handle is polished blonde hardwood, designed to fit your hand smoothly and comfortably with a non-slip grip. You'll be proud to use it as a carving knife at your nicest dinner party. And your stainless steel slicing knife will stand up for years of hardest kitchen wear. It's stronger. It's extra sharp. It's extra useful. You may want two of these fine knives, so here's what to do. For each stainless steel slicing knife you want, send in two Old Nick or Bit of Honey wrappers with 25 cents. Please use coin. Do not use stamps or checks. Send to Old Nick, Box 144, New York 8, New York. Old Nick, Box 144, New York 8, New York. Send your orders now, because this is the last time we will make this offer. Send in today. Now, back to our Old Nick, David Harding, counter-spy case. Looks quiet enough, Chief. Just a nice suburban home. Yeah. Well, as long as he's not expecting us, let's go. <clears throat> Put the duck, Chief. Over here, behind this tree, Peter. Thought he wasn't expecting us. That just shows how wrong you can be. It's going to be a tough one. Listen, Coppers! Can you hear me? We can hear you, Malone. Better give yourself up. I've got one good eye, two good guns. Don't worry about me. Malone, we're United States counter spies. We'll have a squad of men out here in five minutes. You haven't got a chance of getting out of there. I make my own chances. Now get this, get it straight. I got two dames in here. A nurse stooge talked to and my darling little niece. I'm coming out with both of them. First move you make, I tell them. You hear me? I tell them. Now take it from there, copper. You're crazy, Bill. You can't do Shut it. Shut up, Mary. You're out of this now. Have Mary. Mrs. Gordon. Go on, start moving, you two. I won't let you do it, Bill. Get out of my way, Mary. No. Okay. <laughs> oh. Come on, come on. You start moving. Bill. Don't. Don't. So help me if you two don't move, I'll kill you right now. And Mary, no. No. Mrs. Gordon, don't. What? Goodbye, Bill. How is she, Chief? Not good. What about that girl, Anne? She didn't know anything about it at all, hmm? No. Is she really Malone's niece? Yes. 
Only Malone's real name actually was Gordon. He planned to kill the character of Malone and live off the stolen money as Gordon. Why all this elaborate front involving the kid in it? Well, Dr. Franklin is one of the few men that could treat Gordon's eyes so that it wouldn't give him away. Oh? Mary Gordon spent two years building up respectability so that Franklin would have no hesitation in treating Gordon. But she liked the part she'd been playing more than the part she'd been living. Uh, enough so that she resisted Malone to protect the nurse and the girl. And when that wasn't enough, she used his second gun to kill him. Mr. Harding, will you come in, please? Of course, Miss Walton. She wants to talk to you. Please, Aunt Mary, don't talk. Just rest. Mr. Harding, the money Bill hid, there's a reward for it? By the insurance companies. Would Anne get it? I don't know. Please, Aunt Mary, don't talk. I don't want anything but you. Bill, in his gun, this a paper. It tells about the money. No, Aunt Mary. No, I won't touch it. I don't want it. I want you. You know, I I can't promise anything about a reward, but... I don't want to leave her alone. Mrs. Gordon, don't tax your strength. I promise you she'll be all right. I owe you... Well, I'll look out for Anne. She'll be all right. I swear to So will you, Aunt Mary. So will you. I'll see that she goes to school. I promise you we'll stay together. She... Aunt Mary! Aunt Mary! Aunt Mary! <laughs> Miss Welton, you'd better take her with you. <laughs> Peters will drive. I'll wait for... Well, I'll stay here. And now we're happy to present the first Army surgeon, Brigadier General Guy Blair Dennett. I'd like to talk with our young women who will be graduated this month from secondary schools all over the country. And I'd like to have your mothers and dads listen, too, because this concerns your future and the future health and well-being of America also. We here at the First Army are proud to speak for the National Student Nurse Recruitment Program and its campaign to enroll 50,000 student nurses into civilian hospitals this year. I can tell you that the need is great, that while more young women are entering the profession than ever before, the patient load in our hospitals has increased faster than the available supply of nurses. I can tell you from my own observation in war and in peace about those things that set a nurse apart from the young woman who is content with just a job. If you have ever watched the capable hands, the courage and the clear mind of the nurse as she ministers to a child, to a soldier bought from the battlefield, to the man or woman who is helpless, you will know what I mean. So I say to you, young women, consider seriously the many special opportunities in nursing and the opportunity to work with those who are making medical history. Thank you, General Dennett. And our appreciation to the American Hospital Association and to the Advertising Council for their cooperation. <laughs> Tonight's David Harding counter-spy case was dramatized by Palmer Thompson with music by Jesse Crawford and featured Mandel Kramer and Bryna Rayburn. David Harding counter-spy is a Phillips H. Lord production originating in New York for the makers of Old Nick and Bitter Honey candy bars. Now a listening reminder. Predictions and inside Washington stories. That's what Drew Pearson brings you every Sunday night. Hear Pearson tonight over this ABC station. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>